Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. My assistant's here gonna help me answer some of my viewers' questions. Hi. <laughs> there we go. So I, I've got two major things that I wanna get accomplished with this video. One of them, somebody asked me, what's my opinion of a perfect hospital? And I think after all these years, uh, I finally kinda have an answer for you. And uh, the other one is I wanna answer a viewer named Elsie's questions about how to get into the career field given she's already got some experience with having a degree so let's start right out with my perfect hospital this is a long time coming <laughs> thanks sweetie so when I thought uh, I had the idea of a perfect hospital I was wrong and every time maybe it was because of the stage of my career that I was experiencing that work environment you have to be at the right stage in your career for the place that you're currently working at and biomeds do tend to move around and a lot of these guys will probably agree with me on some of these points hey sweetie no 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 the no sweetie the dogs are fat They're, the dogs are fat we don't need to feed them no more thank you <laughs> okay so me my perfect hospital oh since i've been around the block a few times my perfect hospital is a 100 to 350 bed hospital. It's a smaller facility. That would be my perfect place. You know where the equipment's going to be at. You have that time to make those interpersonal relations with people. I work currently at a huge facility. Huge. It's 14, 1500 beds, something like that. And given I've gotten to meet and know a lot of people, but more people know my name than I know their names. And that's... I, it's kind of frustrating. I've never been really good with names in the first place, but it's especially, I wish you guys could see my daughter's putting blankets on the dogs. Oh my gosh, these poor dogs. It's like 90 degrees outside. Anyway, sweetie, 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 Addie. No, no. Can't you hear the bulldogs hot, guys? The bulldogs are already dying. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Come here, come here. I thought you were going to help me. You're not going to help me? Okay. You're, you're an important part of my video, sweetie. Come on. Okay. So my, my uh, ideal biomed hospital uh, would be 100, 350 beds. You know where your equipment's at. You know what you got to do, and you can make it happen. Plus, with that amount of beds, it's way easier to judge your manning. With a huge facility like mine, because there's different departments located in different towers, it's an absolute nightmare to try and tell my bosses that I don't have enough manpower to get the job done. It's an absolute nightmare. And it's not like they listen to me anyway. So, 100 to 350 beds, it's perfect. Um, with 4 to 10 operating rooms, that would be really nice. Could get a lot of stuff done. Uh, my ideal hospital would be a not-for-profit. I've worked for for-profit hospitals and I have run into conflicts with people that are in charge at those hospitals because they are trying to tell me what I do and do not need the maintenance. And that's not a good way of doing business. I should be telling my hospital what needs to have maintenance and what doesn't. Not the other way around based on cost. So a not-for-profit hospital would be best. A religious hospital not necessarily uh, because I'm a religious person um, but more so because from my experience I've worked at several religious hospitals and they've always been a better environment so um, that's it is what it is you know especially around Christmas time uh, around the holidays religious hospitals have always just been a better working environment uh, my ideal hospital would have one to three biomeds. Let's say uh, imaging biomed, uh, biomed supervisor, and a biomed trainee. That's, you know, for a 100 to 300 bed hospital, that's, that's pretty good. That's perfect. Um, an in-house biomed program, which includes the management. I have worked at hospitals that have converted over to uh, third party and not against you guys that are third party more power to you man i love that you guys love your jobs i just 
I, I have always seen a conflict with saving the hospital money and being third party. And my experience, especially with third, third party management, is there's all this corporate garbage that they want you to do throughout your day that is not doing your job. It's to make the corporation happy, not the hospital. And this is my biggest complaint. Maybe, maybe, maybe right now, my, my biggest complaint right now is that I, I'm being asked to do some corporate stuff that has nothing really to do with making my hospital better or my job better. It's, it's more so to make some corporation happy. And that's what I have to feel about that, man. They're always trying to cut costs and, you know, find ways to save money and maybe stick one to the man. And that's not how I do business. Uh -huh. my, my job at a hospital, and I'm firm on this, guys, my job at a hospital is to save the hospital money, meanwhile decrease downtime. And sometimes it costs money to decrease downtime, but it's a balancing act, and it's a balancing act that I should be able to choose, not to have somebody sitting halfway across the country choose for me, all right? So, my ideal hospital would be an in-house biomed program. And I know you guys have seen me rag on this many times before, my ideal hospital would use a simple to use CMMS program, which is your database for work orders, and it would not be Nivolo. <laughs> I know I rag on it. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. If I found my beautiful hospital here, that could be waterfront property, but they use Novolo, I'd probably still turn them down. <laughs> it's, that's the way it is, guys. Uh, and then there's the secondary issues after that. What's the PTO plan? Believe it or not, uh, that's personal time off. There is such a huge difference between facilities on how they treat holidays and personal time off. Do your research, guys. There's a big difference between facilities. Retirement plan. There's a big difference too. What type of retirement plan do you have? What's the contribution like? I like to max out my contribution. And, you know, some places contribute less than more. Other places, you know, it's a big difference between when you're considered vetted. Some places will be two or three years. Some places will be eight years before you're vetted. Eight years. That's crazy. I, I'll tell you right now. Somebody tells me it's eight years that, and I'm vetted. And um, I would hesitate on choosing that facility. And I've seen them. And probably one of the other most important secondary options or secondary issues would be training. What type of training program do you have in-house? I mean, because some places, in order to maintain their uh, magnet certification, they have to uh, they have to contribute a certain amount towards their training budget every single year. And that means that you're going to have lots more opportunities for, for advancement and training as biomed. So go for those places that, that say that they have a guaranteed budget for uh, training. Because trust me, I've been in a lot of places that don't train very much. In my last hospital, uh, the Methodist Hospital, <laughs> I have a fat dog right here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> go on, you stupid, stupid animal. Go on, go on, go on. Go, on. go lay down. Sorry guys, um, my last hospital, uh, there was mandatory training. You will go to a training every single year and given this being a COVID year, they're gonna have some fullbacks on it, but I've been at other hospitals that hardly train at all, hardly at all. So that's there's a big, big difference between training from facility to facility. And don't necessarily listen to the managers, all right guys? If you're applying for a position at a hospital someplace, you need to actually talk to the technicians and ask them, like, what's the training like here? All right? For somebody of your pay grade and your biomed experience level. Because there's going to be a big difference there. Some of the senior technicians might get all the training and never want to do the work. I've, I've been at places like that. Or, you know, you got the guy that's like 65 years old and he's going to all the training. It's like, why the hell is this dude going to all the trainings when he's going to retire in just a couple years? Doesn't make sense. So, anyway guys, that's, that answers for my perfect hospital. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Hey sweetie, Addie, why don't you come here? Come here, come here. Are you, Addie, Addie, hey, come here. Come here, big girl. Come here. All right, thank you, you nut. All right. Okay, so, uh, who's that?
you know her name? Elsie. 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 Okay. And uh, Elsie wrote me today and she asked me a, a variety of questions and it was a lengthy, lengthy uh, email. And I, I love those emails, guys. I absolutely love them. And I'm going to try and answer them as much as I can. So uh, Elsie wrote me and she said, uh, how can I best get into the career field? She's got a degree, but not necessarily in this particular particular area. Elsie. Well, Elsie, you already have a degree, a technical degree of some sort. Go for it. Apply for Biomed 1 positions, for sure. And I know a four-year degree, Biomed 1, but here's what I suggest. I highly suggest applying for those Biomed 1 positions and get in and do a year to two years until you know the environment, you know the hospital, you can talk the talk and walk the walk, all right? Then you can start thinking, are you going to develop your clinical engineer side of your career? Because with a four-year degree, maybe you want to convert that degree towards a clinical engineer degree. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't want to deal with healthcare at all. But either volunteer or go forth and apply for those Biomed 1 positions. And what I can tell you is learn up on this career field as much as possible. And I, I would be more than happy to help you in any way, shape, or form. You guys are the future, and that's why I'm answering this with a video is because it's a really complex answer. Um, I could tell you that if you can't get a job, volunteer. In other words, uh, reach out on LinkedIn, find a hospital near you, and reach out to those guys, present them with your resume, or give them a brief uh, summary of your experience and what your goals are. And then reach out to these people and see if they'll allow you to volunteer. And most of the time, if you are a good volunteer, as soon as the Biomed 1 position opens up, you will still have to go through the process of applying for the position, but you're a shoe in for it. You're guaranteed if you're a good worker and you're very trainable. So, um, Elsie, what I can tell you is when in doubt, apply for jobs. And if anything, check for local equipment vendors. If you don't really know about medical equipment and you want to get your feet wet, check with local medical equipment vendors and see if they will uh, allow you to do a warehouse job or something. I mean, you obviously have plenty of education to at least get your foot in the door. You just have to do the legwork, do your research, find out what's available in your vicinity. And that's going to be the hard part, reaching out to people, contact people through LinkedIn. It's such a tool. I wish I had LinkedIn when I was getting started because in what world can Joe Schmo talk to executives at a, at a hospital or at, at a company? It's impossible normally, but I'll tell you right now, I've had executives sit there and write me through LinkedIn or through email because of something I said about a product or whatever here through these videos. How crazy is that? Just me, Joe Schmo. I've got executives watching my videos and stuff. This is the craziest thing in the world to me. But use LinkedIn as a tool and reach out to those hospitals and just sell yourself. Sell yourself. It's You are like a product and a tool you got to tell them what your goals are, be motivated, and do your research, okay? So, Elsie, I'd love to answer your question more, more specifically than that. Uh, salaries? Salaries can be varied, extremely varied, compared to place to place based on your cost of living and based on the competitiveness of the atmosphere. Because some places are extremely competitive, and they're looking for biomeds, and you can almost name your price. And other places, it's not so much. And you've got people competing uh, heavily for the same position. Okay. Yes, sweetie. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I would say for a Biomed one, your normal salary, depending on cost of living, could be 35000 to 50000 That's That's my best guess because based on cost of living for wherever you are at. And... Um, what you can always do, like I said, use LinkedIn as a tool, find a hospital near you that you would like to inquire at and find a biomed that currently works there and just ask them, what's the salary range of biomed ones in this area? Reach out to them. They'll probably answer you and they'll probably answer you honestly. 
So guys, that's two questions uh, that I can get answered. I know it might feel a little long-winded, but it's the best I can do. I just got home from work. My daughter wants to go outside and play, and uh, I'm going to go out and do that, right? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>